it must have been quite a revelation for uh, you said Brian. I f- can't pronounce his last name. Katanzaro. Yeah. The mad scientist. Now, when he's on stage talking to experts who have spent well years or perhaps decades in artificial intelligence as they knew it with textbooks that you say that did not have more than a thousand page textbooks that only had 10 pages dedicated to neural networks yeah. but it must have, must have been quite something where there are few people wanting the world to see look here this is where the future is going to be but you needed somebody like a jensen to acknowledge that okay they are that is indeed the, the the route to take as they were developing these systems what nvidia had always been looking for was something like 3d graphics which had infinite demand no matter how much computing power we supply these 3d graphics gaming customers they're always going to come back and ask us for more always mm, okay right. we're never going to satisfy what they want and they were always nvidia was always looking for another kind of customer with a similar demand profile and Jensen realized it, AI customers would be exactly the same way. No matter how much computing power we give these AI customers, they're going to come back and ask for more. That was the leap. That's oh. what he saw. And that's why he invested so heavily in it. He'd been spending his whole career looking for another thing like this. And he would write on the whiteboards in his office this acronym, O-I-A-L-O, once in a lifetime opportunity. And he believed that. He was like, this is for all of us, the greatest opportunity we've seen in our lifetimes, the greatest opportunity to change the world with our technology. You know, gaming was great, but it didn't change the world fundamentally. I mean, it had an impact, but it wasn't going to, you know, it wasn't a revolution. Mm -hmm. I think Jensen saw very early, maybe even almost before anyone else, him and Jeffrey Hinton and a few other visionaries. But it was really Jensen who saw the hardware side of it. Um, that this hardware was just going to change the world and he had to step on the accelerator as quickly as possible so he could be the first and basically only provider. And I like the way you put it, and I quote you from your book. You you write that for a decade, he had stood at the prow of the ship scanning for land. Now it was as if he had found Atlantis. Yeah, yeah, Atlantis was good because it's like you couldn't even think such a thing would exist, right? It seems seems fake, yeah. 